finally, we have the signal that the next leg of the Bitcoin bull run is going to begin. And let me tell you in no uncertain terms, I've been so excited to make this video. And thank God I am finally back from my mission to onboard 1 billion Korean users to the Superverse. Have no fear, all 1 billion South Koreans are all a member of the Superverse. Shout out to Korea. But in all seriousness, it was a great time to go travel Asia, to go onboard some really incredible partners, meet with people I could never really get a hold of here or on Twitter, and do a little IRL work that I just simply have never gotten a chance to do. It's the first time I've ever traveled for crypto, but I can tell you that I'm much more excited that the next several months, I am not leaving this room. I mean, I might leave this room, but I'm not going to leave the room. You know what I'm saying? It's time to lock in for the best time of year because Q4 is undoubtedly the most bullish and most exciting time for crypto. And we're looking at a very clear signal that I'm going to show you right now to very easily determine if crypto is about to go full bull mode. So first and foremost, last week, we received an historic rate cut of 50 basis points, which begins the first rate cutting cycle that we've had in many years here in the United States, and certainly since the last bull market, where they raised rates at a pace more aggressive than any other time in history. Now, you'll start seeing charts like this with the Fed pivot of 1969, 73, 81, 2000, 2007, 2019, and now today. And as you can see, highlighted are all these market crashes. Effectively, right now, there is a huge debate as to whether a big aggressive rate cut should mean that the stock market will come tumbling down. As historically, this has been a precursor and an initial signal that a recession is about to take place. So in order to know, are we going to Valhalla or are we destined for doom? We must understand if we are about to get a recession. And that is a really sticky term. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes here. But just know this is sort of the question of the day. Are these rate cuts going to begin a recession like they have several times before? Or is this going to simply drive money, trillions of dollars off the sidelines, trillions of dollars that are currently sitting in money market funds and T-bills and stuff them into our beloved bags? You see, shocker here, I agree with what Alex is saying. The risk of not being positioned here, going into a Trump win combined with rate cuts is nuclear. I don't care if I lose every dime from here, the potential return from these lows and alts is once in a lifetime and worth the risk. The bet must be placed and held. Agreed, agreed. Now, one of the things I'll also comment on is coming into this election, it is neck and neck. And as you know, I've been trying to avoid politics as much as possible. Obviously, Trump has been very vocal in support of crypto. And obviously, a president being vocal in support of crypto is very good for the industry. However, it's obviously a coin toss right now. The only thing I'll say is that the environment is so toxic right now. I I tried recently on this trip to have very normal, very sensible conversations. I'm very middle of the road in all senses politically, so I consider myself a very easy person to talk to no matter which side of the aisle you're on. We'll probably have a lot in common. However, what I've noticed is that the toxicity around politics right now, I've never seen it this bad. Even in 2016 and 2020, it was simply not this bad. And this leads me to believe that a lot of people, if they are going to vote for Donald Trump, are probably not talking about it right now because there is simply no no upside in it. If people perceive that you're not just obsessed with the anti-Trump movement or for any reason, whether it has to do with your career being attacked by the Democratic leadership or any complaints at all, people will literally just jump on you. It does not matter. And so I would just say to everyone out there, if the race is this close, I would assume that there's quite a bit of silent Trump support right now, as there was in the last few elections. But in my opinion, I think it's even bigger than the last few elections because the climate is just so toxic. It's so intense. It's so negative that I'll just say no matter which side of the aisle you're on, just prepare yourself that the election might not go your way. No matter who you're rooting for or who you're voting for, it's going to be okay no matter who wins this election. So take a breath and understand that both of these candidates will print money and Bitcoin will probably go up. So we're probably going to win here one way or another. So I highly encourage people just to understand and maybe prepare themselves for different outcomes, potentially not the outcome you want, because God knows you'll look back at all these emotions, I think, in a few years, no matter which way this goes and think, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have been worrying so much about something that I can't really control. Anyway, on to getting rich. So let's start here with Bitcoin's price action, because as you can see here, since the beginning of March, we put in the first sort of local high here with Bitcoin reaching 73.7 or something like that. And we've been in a series of lower lows and lower highs since then. As you can see, lower low, lower high, lower, 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 lower. Now, this pattern has the potential, not the guarantee, but the potential to be changing right now. And that is coming from this little guy right here. As you can see, 
here, this is the first higher low that we have seen since the beginning of March. So several months here that we've been in this downtrending pattern. And if we're able to break above this level right here, this $65,000 level, this is the big one right here. This is the last lower high. Any amount of money here above $65,000, especially if we close a daily above that, would be a huge sign of strength. Essentially, it's a really simple market here. As you can see, the market did get rejected right around that range. It's very typical that this stuff happens. The first move up here got rejected. But again, this one's a little different. It's not the same as the prior bounces up to range highs because this is coming off of a new higher low. So the bulls have a real chance here to build some momentum and to break out, but they really need to get it together and make it happen. This hasn't changed everything dramatically, but we are actually looking at the precipice of this market structure really changing. And if you've been paying attention to the altcoins over the last few weeks and really a month and a half plus, a lot of coins are significantly off their lows. 50%, 100%, in some cases, 150% off the lows with some absolutely special coins. If you've been following, you probably know one of the ones at least that's been absolutely crushing it since it put in a low. But alas, I digress. We will get to all the coins that I think are going to print here in a minute. But again, we need to get over this last high and that would be an official reversal of this market structure. Again, I'm more degen probably than you guys. I'm more risk on, more of a long-term believer here. Who knows? But I have been holding my coins and accumulating in the danger zone. I have not taken anything off of this market since we started the cycle. Really, since 2022, I have not taken any money out of crypto. I've just been adding and adding because I believe this cycle is going to print in an historic way. But to really understand, hey, look, what's the only boogeyman that I really see left here? Well, that would be if these rate cuts lead to a massive crash recession, a housing crash, a stock market crash, that would take crypto with it. And that would be very, very bad for our backs. That is still a possibility. I don't think it is a guarantee like so many are telling you. And to understand why, we need to understand first, what is a recession? Because recessions are actually very tricky. The White House actually defined a recession as two consecutive quarters of real GDP falling. And the only problem with this is that we actually had two quarters of GDP falling back in 2022. And the White House came out and said, actually, no, 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 it's not a recession because they combined it with the unemployment rate and the jobs data. And they said, no, 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 the economy is doing fine. So what's actually interesting here is, and this was research done by my buddy Virtual Bacon over there. I'm going to highlight his video here in a second because he did what I think of as maybe his best video ever, where he goes in and he pulls apart the recession data and shows you just how backwards and opaque this whole system is. You see, the National Bureau of Economic Research, or ENBER, of course, ENBER is something we all know almost nothing about because it's essentially eight people in a room that go ahead and they decide, oh yeah, we're in a recession or no, we're not. If we do go into a recession, here's the big thing. The S&P will drop, everything will drop a median of 15%. So you can expect maybe 10 to 20% here in the S&P as a drop or a 10% gain. So either it's gonna be bullish or it's gonna be bearish and there's nowhere in between. We are not sitting still here. But what I found crazy here, and I'm not gonna play the video because it's like an hour long, but I highly, highly encourage you to check out virtual bacon's recent video here where he says bitcoin rally after rate cuts don't fomo just yet and he goes in and he actually shows how this national bureau of economic research he talks about how essentially they come out with these uh the inflation data or the recession data you can see how these red lines are when they actually declare that the recession has started and you can see that throughout this history the actual declaration that we're in a recession sometimes happens after the recession has completely ended so if you're going off of the official hey we're in a recession or we're not in recession from NBER, you are essentially not playing the market. You're missing the entire move or a significant chunk of the recessionary move. And then the green line shows once they declared that the recession is officially over and that you're back in a bull market effectively, that's this green line, which you can see is sometimes years after the bottom. This is actually really crazy. And this data, I highly encourage you to check it out. But essentially, you can see that this red line is showing that they declared the recession almost the last month or so before it was over. You can see again here that they declared that they were back in a bull market right before another recession in 1982. It's actually crazy here the way this works. So the more that you look at this data, the more you realize that the concept of recession is malleable because they already looked at what should have been a recession in 2022, didn't give it the recessionary definition. And we probably won't know whether we are in a recession or not until much later, way after that data is actionable for trading. So we need to trade this market. And unfortunately, the official recession designation won't be so useful to us. What we will be, however, and this is where Dennis makes a great point, is if employment rises. If employment spikes, that is how we know that we'll probably see 
way more aggressive rate cuts and probably a falling stock market that will take down crypto with it. So the TLDR here is we have two more data reports on unemployment on October 4th and November 1st. Those are the two before the election. Those are the two big ones. And as long as we don't see skyrocketing unemployment there to the tune of over 4.5%, we should be good. So that's the bat signal. The simple signal here is bull market is gonna go crazy if Bitcoin gets back above 65, or we have a significant risk of recession, AKA bad for our bags, if unemployment leaps over 4.5%. Those are the simple ways to view the market. And those are the simple lenses that you can take back to understand whether we are going to break up to Valhalla or break down to the doom cycle. So if you're looking to see some super cycle numbers, you know, some numbers like this, like Ansem's here, his top 10 meme coin conviction list, he has whiff hitting $100 billion in market cap. That is bigger than Solana topped out at last cycle. I think Solana topped at 70 or $80 billion. We have Mog hitting $50 billion. That would be absolutely astronomical. I'd say 100x from the levels it's at today. Mew also hitting $50 billion. I mean, I mean, what I can see here is he pretty much did 100x's here, except for Giga. He has Giga hitting the same as Mog, and that would be maybe 200x from here. He has pretty much Michi doing 100x a little more. What is the word for this? There's something above a moon boy. There's something, there's a Mars boy. This is Mars boy stuff. This is Elon Musk stuff. You are trying to launch rockets beyond our solar system. Does this mean that this couldn't happen? No, it could happen. It could happen. I couldn't help but comment here. I said, it's funny, I hold most of these coins, but if any of these happens, I would be giga rich. Giga rich is a very technical term. Don't get me wrong. Like I want this to happen, but it's giving NFT mania and not the beginning of NFT mania. When the NFT season first kicked off, people were happy to make a few X's. But then over time, people started putting the value, the floor value of a board ape at a million dollars, the floor value of a Fidenza at $10 million. The astronomical price appreciation that people expected was, I think, the killer. So as much as I believe that meme coins will continue to do well, especially the ones that have managed to survive this washout. That's a, that's a good test right now. If this meme is bouncing hard off the lows, has a community that's intact and has managed to survive the last six months of chop, that is a great signal that this meme will be part of the future of memes and most likely will do well this run. I think this is the washout. And if there's any better sign of that, just take a look at PopCat. I mean, this coin is trading literally near all-time highs. I think it's only, what is this, 5% off all-time highs, which is absolutely insane for a coin that's worth almost a billion dollars in circulation. So to say that memes are dead, absolutely false. I never said they were dead. I've just been a longtime believer here after the pump fund era that the established memes are where you want to go and that the new memes are going to be like lotto tickets, going to be very rare for a new meme to have the coordination of focus, attention, and support. It needs to break over that 200 million, that 300 million mark and actually survive. A lot of these ones are running from nothing up to like 200 million and then almost dying. And who am I to say? Maybe they come back, but I'm much more likely to want to get into something that has been super strong through these dips and ride it throughout the rest of the run because the rest of it is straight lotto ticket gambling in my humble opinion. Now, as always, I'm very bullish. I'm fully allocated to the market. I cannot allocate anymore. I've hit the amount of cash that I just simply won't touch to put in this market. Those are my living expenses, you know, my food, my bread, my water. As I get new income, I will inject it into the market, but I am fully allocated. I believe that we are going to be very bullish here until proven otherwise, until we get some massive recession indicator. I'm going to go full bull on this and I will update you if anything changes. So with that question in mind, where am I going to be allocating? As you know, I have my high conviction buckets as well as really three categories, AI, gaming, and memes. Now of those, I will say that those buckets are pretty crystallized and I have been getting a lot, a lot of people shilling me on RWAs, real world asset platforms, and with BlackRock having such a big interest in this. And the thing is, I don't like to fight the Fed and I don't like to fight BlackRock. And in this case, Robbie Michnik here, who's the head of digital assets for BlackRock, has just done an interview where all he's pretty much talking about is tokenization, tokenization of real world assets. So with me knowing that one of the biggest financial forces in the world, in the globe, and probably one of the biggest influencers in the financial space is so bullish on RWAs, I can't help but be bullish on them myself. I will be making a specific RWA video coming up soon. I do not think it's too late to get into this narrative, but I am not going to go too deep on it today. I will also say I'm going to be having a gaming specific video as well as an AI specific video coming up. All of those will be segmented into their own videos so you can get a much deeper understanding 
understanding of each sector. But for now, I'm just going to give you some of the top level stuff here. Now, of course, with AI, let's start there. AI has been absolutely obliterated over the last few months. It's been one of the worst performers throughout the dip, along with gaming, pretty much all utility coins. There was some love for memes, but a lot of memes got wiped off the board here as things went down. Remember Joe Bowden, which was once 800 million down at 3 million now, absolutely disgusting. But if we look here at the top performers of the top 100, we see Arweave, we see BitTensor, we see Near, we see Celestia. These were some of the darlings of the first part of the run, some of the worst beaten coins, and now we're seeing them absolutely come back with a vengeance. Again, BitTensor and Akash have been my two main top tier category leader picks for AI, though there are some new ones coming into the frame. Again, Celestia has been something that we've been sitting on. It got beaten down from its $20 high, but these are the shiny objects that as the market gets more more risk on should perform great. Just look at this move out of BitTensor. You can see it bottomed here in the low 200s. It hit that level back in uh, January before it went on its next move. Uh, and as you can see, it just didn't want to go below there. It pretty much triple bottomed here. You could say it's a, a four times it's touched this support around the low 200s. And when the market was ready, boom, this is when it goes up. And that's the problem with waiting for the full bull signal. If you wait till Bitcoin's above 65, everything's pushing up, you might be buying things at three, four times off the lows. And maybe that's fine with you because it's probably going to go much, much higher than that. But again, you also risk just being caught a little bit midway through the rally and having to hold a significantly longer period of time before you can take profits, which of course has its own risk. That's why I'm a little bit more aggressive because I find that being more aggressive at the lows or what feels like the lows is the way to feel much better as soon as we turn up at all. And that's at least been my strategy. It's worked well for me. Next up, we have a really nice move out of Immutable X. We can see here over the last month, it has come off the lows of about a dollar 14 we can see here that that was you know it was down from about three dollars and 60 so a dollar 14 you're talking about almost a you know 67 a two-thirds discount that it came down to off of the local high and now it's finally starting to break past this resistance and make its move back up now it's sitting about 50 percent off its recent high again you know me i think immutable is sort of that leading game coin it's nice to see it move back up honestly it's been a while since i've seen some green here i'm a big holder i've never sold any of my seed investment into Immutable X. So it's really nice to see this one moving back up. In the AI niche, obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of Akash. Uh, the stuff above it, I don't think, I wouldn't say it's overrated. Obviously, you know, I like BitTensor a lot. I think that's going to be one of the biggest performers of this bull run in AI. The coins very basically that I'm still holding, I'm excited about. AOS, Destro Network, I think took a significant beating, but they were one of the biggest and most pumpy coins. I think this team just really knows how to market itself. So I'm excited to see, hopefully they can get back above their prior highs. But it's important to realize that right now it's very uncertain how the AI race will go. We don't have any big winners except for OpenAI, which is an LLM. Even though it's an amazing company, it's very unclear what the future of AI, what those big winners will be. Here's the thing. I am literally risking an F ton of capital sitting in these AI coins because I believe there will be another AI season. And when that happens, almost all this stuff will pump, kind of like meme season. But the thing is, there's just less of these. And the question is, which one will be the big winner? I'm not sure. I think this is the type of sector where some of this really low stuff could go absolutely bananas, except there's also a risk that these never really catch any liquidity or attention. So to me, I'm going with the coins that I'm already in, that I'm already excited about, and I believe will capture attention again because they've proven it the first time and that when the market grows by maybe Bitcoin hitting 90k or 100k that these AI tokens will go absolutely bananas. That's my belief is that this is what's going to happen. Again, I have gaming, memes, and then AI, which I consider largely to be a meme. So you have gaming and then, you know, meme coin-ish categories. Mostly AI is the big impactful business sector. Once we start seeing more successful businesses in that sector, we can expect that these coins can be absolutely nutty and AI success could happen at any moment, any time a company could come up with a radical invention in AI. And it's most likely that we will see meaningful innovation within the next six to 12 months because the pace of AI development is just mind blowing. So to me, AI is a great place to invest. I will be doing a lot more digging into things like Deepin, the cloud compute marketplaces, the actual big data things going on, all of the different components of AI. I'll be going into it on a much deeper level in an upcoming video. Smash the like button if you're excited to see that one. I haven't actually said smash the like button in what feels like years. So I don't know. That felt good though. Smash that like, obliterate that like, 
Now onto my beloved gaming. Let's see, we've definitely seen some coins actually pumping up here a lot more. We had Moon Tropica and Carrot having really nice days over the last few weeks. But overall, it's been a really tough last six months or so for the gaming niche. The biggest holds I have here are Immutable, Beam, obviously this one very, very super duper cool coin. And I talked at the very beginning of the bull run about Ronin, who have proven that they are one of the best distribution platforms for gaming. I'm gonna be doing a much larger gaming video where I go into all of the updates. There's been some amazing updates across the space. And I feel like once again, these are builders that are getting absolutely no love from the crypto community. In fact, I get openly mocked sometimes for being a gaming enthusiast in the crypto space. However, I do believe I will be having the last laugh as this is simply the only category of protocol and product that has, in my opinion, the ability to gain mass adoption, to really onboard the hordes of users. I do think meme coin trading is awesome. It can be really fun. It can onboard users, but I do feel like on the whole, it's such a high skill game and such a low odds game of success that it's really hard to keep users when we're talking about the meme coins being the actual product that people onboard to. I just don't believe that that's the story of crypto. I think meme coins are a great part of crypto, but I think the actual consumer product is the video game. And that's why I'm so passionate about this sector. Now, while I will be doing a full update on Super, I'm not going to be doing it right now. I will encourage everyone, go to superverse.co slash superfi. That's superverse.co slash superfi and you can actually upload an image here like for example i can get my uh my john ham meditating image here and i can uh put on you know a bandana onto him you know that actually one that doesn't look good Let, let's put on let's put on this one let's put on this bandana yeah that looks good that actually fits his his yoga vibe right now you could put on the uh a bandana you can put on some uh some hair if you want to put on hair make him a super saiyan Anyway, it's cool. It's easy. Download the image. You can make it your PFP really easily. Anyone who does do this, I will be following you on Twitter. So go ahead and superfy yourself and tweet about it. And I will go ahead and give you a follow on x.com. So there you have it. We have a very clear signal. If Bitcoin breaks above 65K, we are back in a high time frame bullish trajectory. And the actual target of that move would really be over 90K. I wouldn't see Bitcoin stopping short of 90K. In fact, I wouldn't see Bitcoin stopping short of 100K, though there might be some games to be played around that number. On the bearish side, let's just be completely real here. If we do end up seeing skyrocketing unemployment, meaning over 4.5%, over 5%, I would be bracing for impact because that means the Fed is probably going to cut rates at a super fast pace and it will signal potentially really big issues in the economy, which everyone would race to the exit and sell their stuff. Does that mean that we can't go bullish after that? Of course we can, but in the short term, we could see a pretty aggressive drop. So this is the first time we've had such a clear moment where we can say we are so back and it's not just all-time highs it's 65k that is a line in the sand trade above it and we are very bullish in my opinion though because we're coming off of this higher low and because altcoins have been super bullish the last month it really feels as though that risk appetite is coming back into the market and my money is that q4 is going to be yet another storybook time for gains as always before we go please check out nordvpn it is absolutely the best vpn on the market and if you're in crypto crypto, you are taking massive, unnecessary risks by browsing your favorite crypto sites without NordVPN enabled. It is the safest and, in my opinion, the best product, the cheapest on the market for the quality, and you can get a big, fat, juicy discount by signing up for NordVPN with my link in the description. As many of you know, I was hacked in the past, and it all came from data leakage from not using proper protections like we see here with NordVPN. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so please check out Nord. You have nothing Nothing to lose by trying it. And as always, we want to thank them for sponsoring the channel. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to check me out on Twitter where I publish much more frequently, x.com slash Elio Trades, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.